Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsburg Arcade at BergsburgArcade.net and here we are back with another video in our item series tutorial. So we'll take a look here where we left off. Uh, that's right, we can create our items, we're adding them to our list over here, but they're not doing anything when we click them. So that's the first thing we're going to work on, is getting it so it actually does something when we click. So we're going to close that down, jump into the code, and right here under our list view in our iOS object editor, we're going to go ahead and enable this functionality for the button. Let's come down here. And to start off with, we're just going to debug.log. And we just want to see that when we click the button, we can actually get something that associates with the button. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and get the object that we clicked on, grab its name. We'll come back in, start it up. And if I click club, we get the club, knife, dagger, sword, and whatnot. Great. Let's close that up. We'll head back into the script. Now we actually want to get a reference to the item that we actually click itself because we're going to be using this to either edit or delete later on. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can actually just get a reference to the actual object itself in the database or to the index of the item. Now, since we're going to be going instantly into the actual uh, details view where we're going to be editing and deleting, it doesn't really matter which one we pick. It's really, it just depends on how we've set this up for the database. Uh, so if we're making edit, we want to replace, we're going to replace by index. Uh, we can get by index. Uh, we can remove by index or by item. And we can also insert, which we're not going to be using. So since everything's set up to do by index, we're going to go ahead and use index for this. So just to show that we can get the index, I'm going to go ahead and add on the actual index of the item and just have a little more formatting. Save that off. We'll come back in, open up the editor. And when we click club, it's number three, which is right. Because remember, it starts off at zero. So zero, one, two, three. We'll go ahead and click the rest here. So we can just get the index of the item itself. But we're going to need to store this somewhere. So what I'm going to do is, well, we'll clear this to begin with. Come in here. We're going to need a variable to store this in. And I'll just go ahead and stick it down here. And it's going to be private. We don't need to share it outside of the editor. So int, and I guess I'll call it selected index. And I'm going to start that off at zero. As soon as I fix it. And down here, I want to go ahead and set the selected index equal whatever it is I clicked. Great. Now we need a way to actually display it in the details view. So when we click it, it's grabbing it. And we want it to display up here. Now we can go ahead and control this area that we're going to be looking at here with the finite state machine. We've gone over those before in the previous hack and slash series. So shouldn't really be too new for those who've gone through those tutorials before. But uh, we're going to go ahead and use one here anyway. I'm going to close this down. And it is controlling the actual display view. Just we'll have to open that up. The item system, come on. Scripts, uh, editor. Object editor and detail view, right? Details. I'm going to go ahead and set my my uh, state machine up here. Since this is the area it's going to be controlling. Now, really, it doesn't have to be in the class itself. We could just go ahead and make it external. But I'm actually just going to throw it in the class itself because this is the only place we're ever going to use it. So I'm going to create a num and I'm going to call it display state. And we'll go ahead and set some values in here. The first one I want is just none. The second one I want to be, I guess, where we display the details. And for now, that's the only two I want. There's going to be more that I want later on. Uh, probably should put weapon details. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave it at details. Now, we're going to need a variable to store that at. So I'll go ahead and put it here. And we'll call it display state. And I'm just going to call it state. And I want to start it off equaling none. And then for the actual GUI part where it displays uh, what to, well, what to display, I'm going to go ahead and take a look here. We're going to set a toggle up for it. So by default, it has the create button down here and that's it. Uh, it does have the, the box and everything out. So we, we always want that displayed. So it's going to come through here. Here's that box that we always display. Uh, let's see if we got the expanded height. We're actually going to go ahead and keep that. So it's right here. I have show weapons, detailed display weapons. So where are we getting this one? We have a bool set up here. And that's when we click the create button, right? We really miss the little toggles being able to shrink functions down that we get in Visual Studio. 
Uh, so it's not show up. So that's where we're getting that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put it right here. So, okay, so oh, nope, we need to switch first. So the variable we're going to switch on with state. Uh, keep doing that. And then let's go ahead and actually list all the possible states that we can get. So the first one is display state details. Let's go ahead and throw my break in there. Then we're going to have a default, which is going to be the none. We'll leave that blank. And we'll go ahead and grab this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it into the details here. And then we'll come out here. We're going to end that vertical, add some space, begin the horizontal, throw out my buttons, whatever buttons we need here. And then end. I think that'll be fine. If we come back in. I'm actually going to close it and refresh it. Oh, we do have some errors here. Oh, maybe not. Let's go ahead. We'll open it up. See what happens. Uh, it's not displaying because we're not actually to changing the state. So that's the first thing we have to change. I'm going to come back in. Uh, so we're showing the weapon. And right here we're saying, okay, go ahead. Make the template where equal a new weapon. And then show the new weapon. So what I'm going to do is come down here and say state is equal to display state details. I'm just going to copy that because there's a few other spots. So once I've hit saved and it's done all this, I want to go ahead and switch the state back to none. Now we could get rid of this uh, variable right here as well. Uh, since right now we still only have two states, but later on when we start adding armor and other things, we're going to want to know which one to display in the detail. So I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this here for now because I know we're just going to add it back in later. And down here, cancel, exact same thing. Very last thing we want to do is go ahead and set the state back to none. And that should take care of this part uh, or not. There, we just made an empty. Uh, we'll take care of that when we get into editing. Hmm, why did it not go? So when we go ahead, so we're switching on state when the case is this, we want to go ahead and display that. Display weapon. Show the create weapon button. Well, let's go ahead and keep track of the state up here then. And I'm going to put it right above the actual state command. And I'm just going to use a label. Editor UI. Do I not have the editor up here? I do not. So we'll go ahead and we'll add this here. Using Unity Editor. Layout dot. I think it's label field. Right. Label field. And we want number two, I believe it is, right? Yeah. String for the label. What's it? No, this is the one we want. Okay, so we're gonna say state colon. And we'll actually add on our state itself, just so we can keep track of what the actual state is. Make sure we end that in a semicolon. We'll save that off. Jump back in. Open up our editor. And it's not displaying our state for some reason. Let's come back in. And apparently after restarting Unity, it actually starts to show now. <laughs> all right, so if you're having the same problems, all I did was save the project, close down Unity, reopen it, and we actually have it displaying one now. Great. So let's go ahead and work on clicking the one on the side. I guess we should let that open. Clicking one on the side now and displaying it over here. Let's jump back into our script. We're going to come back over to our... We don't need the database. Well, we'll keep the database open for now. We're going to go ahead and go into the list view. Uh, we've got the selected. We're going to go ahead and say state is equal to display state dot details. And then we also have to tell it what to display. And I believe we're using a variable for, yep, temp weapon. So I'm going to come right up here and say temp weapon is equal to, and we can just actually grab this. No typos this way. So we'll actually go ahead and just grab all the data out of there and throw it into the temp weapon. And I think by default, what I'm going to do is set the selected index to negative one. Since our database can never have an index of negative one, it's a great way to check to see, you know, if the value of our selected index is negative one, then we know the item we're adding is a new item. If it's anything above, well, zero or above, uh, we know it's another item that we're actually editing in our database. So for now, we're going to leave it like that. So we'll come down, set it to whatever it is we clicked on, store the actual items properties in our temp, temp weapon, then go ahead and display it. And we also need the ability to display the weapon too. 
which was, I believe, just display weapon. Uh, is it display new weapon? No. Show weapon details. That's what it was. So we need that as well. Show weapon. Is it new weapon details? It is show new weapon details. I'm sure we're going to be changing that variable sometime along the way. But for now, we'll go ahead and just leave it there. And we'll leave this to true. And let's go try that out. So I'll go ahead. Open it up. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, that's fine. Let's go. We'll click one. And there we go. It shows the details here. So we can go ahead and click this blank one. Now, I do want a way to gray this out. So if I have something selected, I can't select something else until I've decided what I want to do. Either save, cancel. And we will have to add a delete button there as well. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and add one, a name here. Let's call it, uh, what do we have here? We have a short sword. Let's do a long sword. We don't have one of those yet. And of course, when we hit save, it actually adds a new one. Not the property we want. And if we notice that when we updated here, it changed it in the database too. Now it really depends on the behavior you want. Do you want them to be able to edit the item in the database basically in real time? Uh, basically it's saving it as you edit or do you want them to make all the edits to a temp and then save it? I want to want them to make the edits to the temp itself. So we're gonna have to change that behavior a little bit. But I do want to clean something up in the database without worrying about making delete buttons just yet. So I'm gonna come into the database and I want to get rid of these last two. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them. I don't want 46. Let's go ahead and close this first. And we'll just make it four long. And of course, when we open it back up, they're gone. So we're going to come back in. And we're going to want a way to make a new weapon. And if we come take a look over here. Come down to our buttons. We're going in and saying that, uh, let me see. Temp weapon is a new iOS i a new IS weapon. So what we want to do is have some way to copy the values in without actually making a, a copy to the reference. So that means we have to open up IS weapon. I will take a look here at the constructors. And of course we have a basic default empty one. And we have one where we're passing in the int durability, max durability. We don't have one where we're actually passing in all of the game object values too, the IS, uh, was IS object. So we probably should make one that clones it. Okay, well, I guess we'll take care of that in the next video. What I want to do now is just to have it um, not put two in the database. And we can do this just by checking the index, well, our selected index. As I said before, if it's negative one, we know it's a new item. And if it's anything besides negative one, we're going to go ahead and make it uh, an update. So let's come back into the script of IS object and the save button right here. And we're going to want to do the same thing down here. So we're going to take a look. Instead of adding to it, here's where we're going to check the selected indexes. So if selected index, not security, is equal to negative one, meaning we have a new item, go ahead and add it to the database. Now, if it's not negative one, doesn't matter what it is, if it's just not, then we want to go ahead and update. So it's going to be database dot, and I actually forget already. Was it modify? Uh, we're using replace in this example. So dot replace. Another thing we could do is remove and then insert as well, but I'm just going to go with replace. And let's see what the functionality for replace actually was. We're just actually reassigning the item right into it. Okay, that's fine. All right, so now it takes an index and the item itself. So we'll go ahead. We already know what the index is. It's selected index. And we know what the item is because it's new, was it temp weapon? Go ahead and close that off. Then we'll go ahead and set the all the flags, we'll set it back to, to null. And we're also gonna wanna go ahead and set the selected index back to negative one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing right here. Copy the selected index down here. So if they hit the cancel button, meaning they don't want to save, we'll go ahead and make the changes there. And I can hear some footsteps coming down the stairs. Unfortunately, that means my son's coming down. So I'm going to have to go ahead and we'll, we'll finish this off. Then we'll save it. And then tomorrow we'll go ahead and set up so that we can actually clone our items without saving it directly to the database every time we make an edit. Well, let's go ahead and take a look to see what we just did now. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this up. I'm going to go ahead and take club. I'm going to call it club Z. I'll hit save 
And there we go. It does not make a new one. Now, I do want to break the direct link here because we don't want to have them being able to edit. And I want to gray this out as well. As we're seeing whatever field you have highlighted doesn't change, but you can still select other ones. And I do not want that behavior. So we'll have to disable all those buttons or at least gray them out somehow. Maybe switch them over to a label instead of an actual button. Uh, but for now, we can select an item. Go ahead, change its name, change whatever properties it has. And we hit save. It does actually replace in the database, even though we are updating in real time. Let's take a quick check on create, just to make sure this is still working. And we'll do a long sword. I'm not gonna bother with any of that. We'll go ahead and hit save, that's working. We hit club. Ah, why is it zero? So we're gonna have to play around with some of this, what has focus and whatnot as well. So we hit cancel, we'll hit club again. See, it's, because it was selected at long sword. So yeah, we're gonna have to play around with the focus as well. Lots of stuff still to do, apparently. But it saves. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.